David, thanks for coming along. I mean, of course, the overall theme has been dominated by the Greek uh, debt crisis, but you're becoming even more bearish when it comes to the euro itself. I mean, you used to think it was 50-50 that it would survive in its present, for, present form. Now you think it's, what, one-third? Yeah, about a third in its present form. There'll be a successor euro, but it won't be made of the same country as, as, as it was. The problem is, look, the will to say the euro is there, the means is not. If you want to fund the saving of the euro, you're going to need probably now something close to between two and three trillion euros worth of money to do the banks, bank stop the budgets of the failing countries, and so on and so on. Well, if you look at the amount of money available, which is constrained both by politics and by the ruling of the German Constitutional Court, you're looking at amounts of money which are available of approximately 10% of that amount. So it's not the will, it's the means. Okay, well, how does a euro break up? I mean, we talked about uh, Angela Merkel last week when she was saying that she did not want a disorderly default for Greece. I mean, did she think that she wanted an orderly one? Well, you know, uh, w wanting an orderly default is like wanting an orderly war. They're rather difficult to organize. And the problem is that uh, there is no provisions in the treaties for kicking a country out or even for a country to leave. It's a lengthy process of actually renegotiating. Oh, there's no way, as you said, there is actually no, no way. way. Yeah. But of course, there's a way if the financial crisis gets bad enough and Greece, Greece defaults then you can have a default in the euro, outside the euro. Does it make any euro. difference? Could you, I mean, if they had yeah, 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 you can. But of course, it'll immediately spread to the market saying, well, what's the next country to go? If it's outside the euro, it'll be exactly the same. The only difference is that if Greece was outside the euro with its own drachma, the drachma would fall by 60% on a good day. And, but also, I mean, the point is that uh, all the credit markets would just dry up and uh, they wouldn't be able to fund whatever uh, debt they did have left anyway. So, you know, we had the Argentinian... Uh, but the, the guy who looked after the Argentinian sovereign de default in 2001, the biggest one ever, mm -hmm. saying that they should default and default big. Yeah, but th that's all well and good. But the problem is you're then going to take away the value of Greek households' wealth, you say 60, 70, 80 percent of it. You're going to have capital flight out of the country, so the corporations are going to go bust, not just the banks. And you're saying this is a great solution because you're going I'm to... I'm not. Well, somebody is yeah. saying that, of course, now you're going to export your way to bliss and happiness. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, uh, you're not, is the quick answer. You're going to move into probably something pretty close to social political chaos and a failed state. So I really, uh, you know, uh, this is a bad place to be beginning to solve a problem. Right, it's so the euro in, let's say, five years from now will look like what? No, I think it'll actually look like something that's made out of northern Europe. It'll include, uh, of course, Germany as the core. France. Uh, France, if it behaves itself and gets its house in order, which is slightly... But no Italians, oppressive. no Spaniards, no I, Greeks. I honestly don't think so, no. Right. I, but I, I, I do think you'll have Scandinavian states and, um, and, and places like Poland and the Czech Republic and Slovakia will be in it because they're of the same culture and, uh, you know, they're playing by the same rules. Well, what happens to the Southern Europeans then? Do they carry on with, a, let's say, in the words of John Major, former Prime Minister, when he talked about the hard and the soft euro, do they continue with a sort of, sort of softish euro? Look, I think it's really difficult to organize a softish euro. You can organize a single currency around a, an economically virtuous area. It's very difficult to organize it around a series of countries which have just been for, which are going to have to leave that area because they can't get their act together. That's more likely to be a chaotic scenario and not one in which you form a new euro. Now, there are ways out of this problem. It's called money. The Europeans don't vote the money, then will the, will the rest of the world come riding in? Will there be, you know, a juggernaut bond from the IMF, so to say three trillion euros subscribed to by the saviors of the world, the Chinese and the Brazilians and the Russians and all these very nice people? It's not impossible. But we're certainly, we haven't been pushed to the degree of chaos to get there yet. And you can get something for nothing either, do you, David? Just no. Yeah, uh, we've got to take a break, but they're going to get more independent strategy. Uh, well, more from independent strategies, uh, David Rose. Right from the start, people have been saying that Greece just, you do the maths and you just see that it cannot do anything but default ultimately. Do you go along with that uh, uh, way of thinking? Yes, unless you're going to pump money in eternally. But Greece won't meet the conditions and Greece will default. Greece, now the question is, inside the euro, outside the euro. Inside the euro, and it's very bad for uh, the euro. Outside the euro, and of course it's a drachma which goes to hell in a handcart. But in both cases it's contagious. The market's going to go on to look for the other countries. So actually now the real question is, how do you ring fence the other countries? And right do now... Do you think there's any move being done to do that? Uh, I think people are, are sort of talking and thinking and so on and so forth, but frankly, no. But simply because, as I said before, 
the, you, you have the will to do it, which you need to do if you're going to save the euro, but you do not have the means. You're talking, I mean, the cost of solving a crisis rises exponentially with procrastination. Okay, I'm going to just move this quickly because also when we're not looking at uh, uh, the euro area, we then tend to look at what's going on in the US. And we've got very weak growth there, so we get weakness from there. How does that affect what you tell your punters? Well, actually, you've just hit on a key point. We have the same problem in the US as we have in Europe. There are differences, you know, reserve currency of the world, deeper financial markets, a uh, greater degree of blissful ignorance, and so on and so forth. But the fact is that the US is on the same trajectory of fiscal um, excesses as, uh, as Greece. It will just take until about 2017 to get there, with or without the current austerity programs in the US. So our real problem globally, uh, because Japan, which we haven't talked about, is a lot worse, yeah. is that we have built up a level of liabilities, first private sector liabilities, then public sector well, we liabilities. We shifted everything from the private balance sheet onto no, the public one. No, we didn't shift it. Didn't we? We, we added to it. Oh, okay. We added to it. There was no swap. That's a myth. We okay. just added. So the result is we now have a total level of liabilities which you cannot fund at levels of growth below 3%, and we're not going to get to 3%. So you've just hit, the, you've hit it on the mark. We are actually falling below the growth rates at which the current level of liabilities are fundable. So uh, what do you tell your punters? Does it say just uh, stay away, just uh, go no, somewhere no, safe? No, no, no. You, you can make as much money as being short as, as long. I mean, yeah. There are loads and loads of things to be short and there are things to be long. I mean, people are going to fly into real assets. I don't want to bore you with yet another gold story, but I don't know who's pushing down the gold price, but it's got to be another central bank trying to do, you know, get some credibility for itself. Lots of things to do.